$600. Not $50 less, not $100 less, $600. It's exactly how much cheaper AMD's 7900 XTX flagship GPU is when compared to NVIDIA's RTX 4090. Now, today AMD revealed the 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT. They confirmed these cards will be available December the 13th, and the 7900 XT will be $899 or $900, and the 7900 XTX will be $999 or $1,000. These prices are absolutely incredible. I mean, for the last, what, one to two years, it seems like every single product that comes out is only getting more and more expensive. Look at NVIDIA, for example, the 3090 was $1,500. The 4090 starts off at $1,600. The 3080 was $700 and the 4080 is $1,200. I understand the world is not in the best economic condition right now, but it's, it's nice to see a company come out with a new, better improved version of their flagship and it remained the exact same price because AMD 6900 XT was also $999. So I call that a win. Now, the big question here is, has AMD officially become the gaming king? Did they officially take the gaming crown? And while we need to wait for the official benchmarks from the official reviews, I'm gonna go out on the limb and say, no, no, they haven't. And I'm gonna tell you why. Additionally, I wanna make it abundantly clear that I don't think the 7900 XTX needs to beat the 4090 in order to be a good product that sells very well. AMD doesn't necessarily have to have the fastest gaming GPU out there in order to succeed as a company, and nor do I think that every gamer needs the fastest gaming GPU out there. And we're gonna talk more about that starting right now. So first of all, why do I think the 7900 XTX can't beat the 4090? Well, for obvious reasons. First and foremost, AMD made no comparisons at all whatsoever to the 4090 during their presentation. Now, I looked up a few different numbers after the presentation, trying to piece together any type of clue that I could about the performance comparison between the 4090 and the 7900 XTX. And here's what I found. On AMD's official website, they have some games listed with official benchmarks. Now, if you look in the top right hand corner of this benchmark, it has the number one next to it. That is pointing to a footnote at the bottom of the page. Now, when I look at that footnote, I see absolutely nothing that says that these benchmarks were ran using any type of upscaling technology like FSR, for example. And so that leads me to believe that the numbers we are looking at are raw rasterization numbers, which is a great thing. So now going back to the numbers and looking at them, I can see that in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 at 4K max settings, AMD is hitting up to 139 frames per second. Now, Hardware Unboxed literally just made a video the other day on this exact topic, which was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 at 4K with max settings with the 4090. And if you look at their chart, you can see very clearly that it hits 139 frames per second. And so you can say in this title, AMD is matching the 4090, which is a really good thing. However, if you do this exact same logic across the board and you start applying it to other games that are listed here, God of War, for example, AMD is clearly losing in these benchmarks when compared to a 4090. And so for those reasons mostly, I don't think AMD is able to beat the 4090 in terms of gaming. Plus not to mention $600 less, right? I mean, every company is in business to make profit, but they also realize in order to make that profit, you have to sell products and it's hard to sell an inferior product if the pricing is too close together. So their best bet is to offer gamers a really good product that is a really good uplift over last generation and make it competitively priced. And that's exactly what they've done here. Now, on that note, the 7900 XTX is supposed to be 1.7 times faster than the 6950 XT. And so technically, in theory, we should be able to look at previous benchmarks of the 6950 XT, apply a 1.7X multiplier to that, and that's about what you can expect whenever you're going to buy a 7900 XTX, in theory. But in reality, it's hard to actually do that because games are always going to fluctuate a little bit and we don't have exact numbers from AMD here. 
We don't exactly know when and where they were always using FSR and not using FSR. We don't exactly know if they were rounding up with that number or rounding down. Maybe it was a 1.65 or 6.8x increase in a game and they said 1.7, or maybe it was a 1.71 or 7.2 and they rounded down to 1.7. We just don't know. Now, with all of that being said, let's talk very briefly about ray tracing. Now, prior to AMD's announcement today, I kept hearing that we could expect about two times the performance increase in terms of ray tracing. And unfortunately, that doesn't look like it's the case. AMD showed off about an average of 1.5x ray tracing improvement across the board. And some titles like Doom, for example, they showed off a 1.6x increase. And that's great and all, but it's not quite the 2x that we were hearing prior to today's announcement. A 1.5x increase is really good. Don't get me wrong, they showed off some numbers here and you can see there is a nice performance increase in various titles. However, with all of that being said, it still doesn't match Nvidia. AMD is now only on their second generation of ray tracing cores and Nvidia is now on their third generation of ray tracing. So Nvidia still remains ahead in terms of that. But what about upscaling technologies? They talked about FSR3 and they showed off a lot of FSR in their benchmarks. Now, they were less than clear about which benchmarks were using what kind of FSR. We don't really know if it was all FSR2 because FSR3 is still yet to come or if it was really FSR3 and maybe they didn't make that abundantly clear. So I'm not really sure. And this is just one of the many reasons why I'm not a fan of companies continuing to push all of these upscaling technologies in our face. I understand upscaling is here, it's a thing, it's not going away, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. But I gotta be fair. I called out Nvidia for this and I said, I don't wanna keep seeing fake frames and fake resolutions. Show me real rasterization performance. And because of that, I thought the 4090 would come out and underperform. And then I had to eat those words and I had to make a follow-up video saying the 4090 is better than I expected it to be because the raw rasterization of the 4090 is nothing short of impressive. However, in this particular case, I'm not so confident the same thing will happen again. AMD showed off way too much FSR in this presentation, in my opinion. I will compromise with GPU companies, okay? If you wanna show me your upscaling performance, that's fine. Just give me a side-by-side -side comparison, please, so that I can see how the raster compares to the upscale and everybody wins, right? But anyway, with all of that being said, Nvidia paved the way, they went first, and it was all about upscaling. So AMD did the exact same thing, and even though I'm calling them out for it, I can't really fault them for it. Now, FSR3, what is it? Well, they didn't really talk about it too much, but here's what we know. We know it's gonna come out in early 2023, and we also know it will contain some type of frame generation technology. So ultimately, FSR3 is challenging DLSS3. AMD is coming to fight this generation, so don't count them out. Now I wanna finish up by talking about a lot of the good things that AMD announced today. Now it's always fun to get a new GPU and it is a nice performance uplift over the previous generation even if it doesn't quite beat the 4090. However, there's more to the story. And first and foremost is DisplayPort 2.1. Now sure, AMD kind of went in the wrong direction with it by talking about 8K and all that stuff. Look, 8K right now is it's a gimmick, it's not true 8K, the market's not ready. If you want more on that, go watch Steve from Gamers Nexus, he'll tell you all about it. But the good part about this is DisplayPort 2.1. Nvidia recently released their RTX 4090 and it got a lot of praise, but a lot of backlash at the same time because it doesn't have a DisplayPort 2.0 let alone a 2.1 port. And so because of the 4090's limited display port capabilities, you're basically leaving performance on the table. You're paying $1,600 for this super high-tech graphics card that basically caps out at 4K 120. The moment you go over that, to my understanding on display technology capabilities, you start getting into image compression and you start giving up true HDR and things of that nature. And so Nvidia caught a lot of flack for that and rightfully so because the 4090 is a $1,600 graphics card starting out and it only goes up from there. So AMD came out swinging talking about a DisplayPort 2.1, which really allows it to have future-proofing capabilities. Now, there's no such thing as fully future-proofing a product, I understand that, but 
This right now is, is about as far as you can go, and, and so I say good job AMD for that. Now, a few other positive things to note really fast is that the cards will clock up to 2.5 gigahertz, and I'm sure we can probably push it past that because a few months ago, AMD confirmed that in their labs, they were able to push the cards over three gigahertz. So I'm sure somebody somewhere will probably attempt to do this, but that's really awesome that right out of the box, you can expect up to 2.5 gigahertz clock speeds. That's great. Now, in addition to that, you know I made a video talking about why I'm skipping over the RTX 4000 series GPUs. And in that video, I talked a lot, and I mean a lot about power draw and wattages and things of that nature, right? And a lot of you in the comment section tend to agree with me that you want companies to focus more on power efficiency, performance per watt. And that's exactly what AMD did today they definitely delivered. The $900 7900XT only has a 300 watt total board power rating. And the 7900XTX is only 355 watts. The 7900XT is lower than my 3080 out of the box in terms of total board power, but yet it will outperform my 3080. That is nothing short of impressive. And so you gotta give credit where credit is due there. Now, because of the less board power and the overall total power draw, that means the wattage requirements are an 800 watt power supply. So you don't have to go buy a thousand watt power supply, a 1200 watt power supply. And of course, AMD is using traditional eight pin connectors, no special proprietary 12 pin connector or adapters or anything like that. This is a simple plug and play solution. The AMD cards are smaller than something like the 4090. They're basically the same size as the existing 6000 series cards from AMD. That's also good because a lot of people have already confirmed the 4090 won't fit their case. And so now they have to go buy a whole new case just to fit the 4090. Well, that's a problem you're not gonna have with AMD 7900 XT and XTX. So, AMD made a pretty big deal about all of these things in their presentation. They called it the easy upgrade path and they really talked about it. And so I got to give them credit. These things are great. These things are very pro consumer and pro gamer. And who doesn't want an easy upgrade process? I know I do. I can go buy a 7900 XT or XTX and I won't have to worry about upgrading my case. I won't have to worry about special cables and adapters or anything like that. And I won't have to worry about a brand new power supply. I'm good, I'm just gonna plug and play. And I think that is great. But at the end of the day, if you're somebody who has to have the absolute best, no matter what, then go buy a 4090. You're gonna pay for it, you have to pay to play, but go buy a 4090. If you're somebody that's like, hey, I want something that's conservative in power, but gives me a really good performance uplift, it gives me great bang for the buck, it's something that's given me great value overall, then it sounds like one of these cards will be right for you. But that's it for me. Let me know what you think about today's announcement in the comment section below. Are you getting one of the new cards? If so, are you getting the 7900 XT or the 7900 XTX? I'm really excited to hear about your feedback. Be sure to leave a comment. If you liked the video, do me a favor, hit the like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, please hit subscribe and check this video out right over here for more content from me. And until next time, E-Rock out.